idea, Rabbi has to say a few words. You don't realize what tremendous power we have. We often don't think about it. What Hashem placed into our hands, what kind of responsibility through the Torah mitzvahs that He, that he gave to us. That's what it means. We say, we're not finished yet. Hashem wanted to bring merit to the Jewish people. That's why He gave us so many Torah mitzvahs to give us more and more opportunities to serve Him. That's what it means. Hashem desired, for the sake of His righteousness, to to make the Torah big, great, and awesome and mighty. Also, two expressions of greatness. Greatness in the sense of quality and in quantity, both. And really, ultimately, the Torah is constantly, we constantly through the ages have found new revelations have been delivered through virtue of of the Torah Shabbat that the Kish Baruch Hu gave us. That meaning the, the Derek, the, like we have the Rabbi Shmuel and Meir, Rabbi Shmuel and Meir, Rabbi Shmuel and And even though they were all, everything was given at, by Har Sinai to Moshe Rabbeinu, through the ages, we received back. It says when Moshe Rabbeinu died, things were lost. And through the ages, through the works of our sages, they were regained again, essentially, what was originally given by Harsinai. <coughs> one of the most difficult passages that we have in this week's Sedra says, Lo yavoy Hashem, that an Ammonite and a Moabite are not welcome into what's called Kahal Hashem, the congregation of the Lord. Dam even the tenth generation, which is in Slav Davka, it says forever, they're not welcome. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that they're not allowed to convert. They are allowed to convert, but they cannot marry into, so they have to marry other converts, or, you know, they cannot marry within the born Jewish people. They're allowed, so they're not denied the religious freedom. They want to do Torah mitzvahs, want to keep Shabbos, want to do all the things that, that they're not kept out of, but there's something, but why? What? Why, what what do they have? What did they lose out on? Because they didn't go out first with bread and water when you were leaving Egypt. They didn't go and, and greet you and, and give you something to eat and drink. That's why they were not uh, welcome into the Kal Hashem. So what does that mean? So... So, and again, that Kahal Hashem means, as we explained, that to, to marry into the born Jewish people, but they are allowed to convert. Nowadays, it doesn't apply anyway, because we don't know when the Cherev came, he mixed up all the nations, so we don't know the original biblical nation, so so it doesn't apply today. But, but what's the ideology behind it? And it's exactly as it says. The reason is given here. Because they didn't, they they lack that aspect of hospitality, which is a, an essential aspect of being a bnei Avraham. That Avram Avinu was, and they were they were bnei Avraham. They were well, not bnei Avraham, but their cousins, their their relatives. But maybe they, but they were, for, you know, but what is this? Why were they left out? So that's the reason. So years later in history, there was. Essentially, a new revelation. Who was this? Ruth of Moavia. Ruth was a Moabite woman. She was actually a princess. Her father was a king. And she converted. And from her progeny came David and Melech, King, king, king David, and eventually Mashiach will come. So, when David and Melech was made the king, it was a big question. Is he even eligible? Is he totally, you know, Look at what a pagam he has, what a blemish he has in his lineage, that he comes from Moab. The answer of why he was permitted and why he was considered kosher 
was a very interesting one. So again, generally in the Torah, reasons are not given for the mitzvahs. This is one of the rare cases where reason was given. They're not welcome because they didn't bring you food and water. So let's go back in history. There were three angels who visited Avram Avinu, who visited Abraham. And they asked, I a sorry shtecha. Where is your wife Sarah? And Avram Avinu, Abraham answered, he didn't able, Oh, well, she's in the tent. So wait a second. Avraham, who just circumcised himself three days earlier, he ran out to bring not only bread and water, but the finest select, you know, delicacies, fresh tongue from cows, to, to give to these guests who he didn't even know. Well, what was she doing? She's by herself in the, in the tent. She didn't go out to, to also... There was a deep reason why those angels had to ask that question. And it was related to this year. Because she set the standard. If Sarah Emenu had gone out and brought food and drinks to these angels, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had the Dove of the Melech. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to say that only this law of a Moabite, it says Moavi, below Moavia. It says a Moabite, not a Moabite woman, not a Moabitess. Why? Because only the men were expected to go out and bring food and drink. The women weren't expected to. Because if Sari Menu, because of her sneers, because of her modesty, she stayed in the tent. Maybe she helped prepare, whatever she did. But she didn't go out like Kidmucha. They didn't, and she didn't have that aspect of going out. That's why, based on that precedent that Sari Menu set, that's why... This halacha applies only to, to the Moabite men and not the women, which is why David the Melech is kosher, which is why eventually Mashiach is going to come, all because of this little act that Sarah Menu must have done, that's just how she was, that's just who she was. She didn't think about this, she didn't sit there and meditate that by virtue, maybe she did, who knows if she, but most likely... She wasn't thinking by virtue of the fact that I'm not leaving the tent, that I'm I'm causing Mashiach to come. And the, that, that's what happened. That by virtue of that exact action that she did, that she would that she wouldn't leave the tent. Her example of sneeze and the Moabite women were not sneezistic women. We had problems with them, with the story with Bilam, which is also mentioned here in this pasuk. You know, they went out. The uh, hisnus benayis mayev. So if they if they could go out to be mezana, they can't just go out to to bring food and drink. No, they're not expected to. Even let's say maybe they might have even done so. Who knows? But they weren't expected to because Sari Maino set that precedent. And ultimately, the Kedushas Levi mentions interestingly also that you know why would they be left out? Is well. They didn't have. They didn't realize that everything in the world comes from the Jewish people. Comes from the spirituality that God brings to the world through the Jewish people. I'll bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. So what you know? They, that's why they're shut out and not able to be part of that ultimately. But I think the deeper message is this thing that every little action we do, even if it's just a habit that we don't even think about, we don't realize the greatness of what we can accomplish, and what we accomplish through davening, we think it's, you know, we don't maybe not think about it, might not, it's, it's still a tremendously great thing, because the fact of the matter is also, most of the people are not coming into davening, so the fact that we're here is really, really tremendous, and we don't realize that we're also bringing Mashiach, just like Sarimeno did by staying in the tent, maybe, I, we don't know exactly, how great our, what we're accomplishing is, but Hashem knows. And I think that's related to, you know, I, I start off with, with the Rabbi Hanani and Akash Rehimer. I want to end off with what is, what we, how we begin the Pirkei Avos. Amich Kulon Tzadikim. Right, says, Kol Yisrael Yishlam Chelek Le'olam Haba. Shem of Amich Kulon Tzadikim. Le'olam Yishar Aretz Neitzim Atayim Asad Adayi L'Zpoyer. 
it's next week's Haftorah ends like this. It says the whole nation are all tzaddikim, they're all righteous, they will always inherit the land, the branch of my planting, the work of my hand, in which I take glory. Now I think, even though that simply means, like we said, the Mishnah says that Kol Yisrael Yeshalem Chelek Lamahaba, I think it relates to what we said here, that we're, you know, sometimes we're judged also based maybe not even on our own level, if Hashem in His mercy will sometimes only expect from us on the level of a tzaddik, which meaning you would think hospitality is a great thing. The women should have been expected to, and they shouldn't have been judged by Sari Menu's level of sneers. If Mimela, they're not sneers to <coughs> women anyway, so, what, so why should they gain something by virtue of Sari Menu's level. And I think that shows the mercy, and I think that, that Hashem's mercy is also related to the fact that the, all the nations are mixed up, that now anybody could become a Jew, and anybody can join our people. There's no, these borders are all gone, these fences are all gone. But also, that we're judged on that level of Amech Kulum Sadikim. That every, that in order to judge us, sometimes, even though generally tzaddikim are judged in a strict way, those of us who we're not on a uh, we're not Sorimena, we're not Avram Avino, but we're compared to them in a way that not to our deficit, but to our benefit. That Hashem will will be merciful on us in in their merit of that's what it means the schus of us of the ancestors, the merit of the ancestors. And furthermore, what they said, that those little actions are tremendous. I think that's what the next Pesach says right after that. Hakotun Yila Elef. Also, it means something else, but I'm saying Alderich Drush. That something that's small will be a thousandfold. Something we think is so insignificant, when Mashiach comes, it will be revealed to us the greatness of every little action we did. They say a story that the Vilner Gon's wife made a deal with one of her friends that when whatever one would pass away first would come and visit the other and give a message of what it's like in the next world. And the friend left first and for a long time the Vilner Gon's wife didn't hear anything and then finally she said, um, you know, I'm not really supposed to come but we made this deal and, and you know, we did so much chesed I was allowed to give you this message, which generally I wouldn't. And I can't tell you what Arlam Hava is like. There's no way to understand. There's no way for, to, for me to describe it for you. You wouldn't understand. However, they were two women who were always doing chesed, always going out of their way to help other people. And they say, you remember that time when you, when you saw somebody who was in need and you went with your fingers to get my attention to go that we should help this person in need. Not, and we're not talking about just the, the reward you're going to get for that kindness, but just the reward for moving your fingers to get my attention. Even that seemingly insignificant action of going like this, because it was involved in that mitzvah, the reward you'll get for just moving your fingers slightly is already something that's too great for me to explain. And so that's what it means, Hakatun Yil Elef. Those little things are going to be tremendous. But Torah the youngest, the smallest, the least, will be a mighty nation. And it's a Ni Hashem I, Hashem says, He will hasten in His time. Let's, meaning when Mashiach comes, let's hopefully see that it's Achishana. It will be quicker than we think.